Great. Thanks, Melissa. I see a lot of cool posters outside and some good snacks and libations, so I'll be as quickly as possible here. I'm representing the animated cell team, and I'll also discuss a little bit of the activities that, that we share with the modeling team and the software engineering team. So as you may have gathered from the previous talks, we will generate an enormous amount of dynamic cell image data here, and most of our markers are collected in a pairwise fashion. So we want to be able to integrate these data to build comprehensive 3D representations so that we can deeply understand the organizational relationships between cell components. We plan to use this type of integration as a critical first step towards building predictive models. So a shared goal of the animated cell team and the modeling team is to define and present spatiotemporal models of whole cells for both predictive and comparative use in exploration, analysis, hypothesis generation, and education. And in this spring, we're going to release a polished version of the website, but today I just want to give you a few snapshots, um, oftentimes literal screen grab snapshots that were taken just over the last couple days, hot off the presses uh, from a variety of computers, so hopefully they'll not stress out my uh, presentation software too much. So one of our major goals is to understand variations in cellular structure and structural interactions that occur from cell to cell, as well as how cells change over time and vary in different environments and in different cell states. For example, can we learn how the 3D structures of mitochondria illuminated via TOM20 tagged in one experiment relate to another structure, such as microtubules illuminated via uh, tagged alpha tubulin in a separate experiment. So Greg Johnson, um, sitting in the front row here, will be standing at the poster later, and in one of his approaches, we're using statistical machine learning tools to model spatial relationships for each structure with respect to other reference landmark structures, uh, which are labeled in common. So for um, this fall, we've been using nuclear and membrane dyes, and then each one of our uh, fluorescently tagged targets is um, its relationships are learned relative to those structures to, to build the model. And once such a model has been trained, we can use it as a tool to generate instances of localization patterns in the previously acquired cell images shown on the left. So for example, we can ask the model what the most probable localization of a particular structure might be uh, given any DNA and uh, cell membrane shape as an input, for example, to model alpha actinin into that cell in the middle, or alpha tubulin, so on and so forth across the different structures that the gene editing team is tagging, and stochastically as well as in different cells. So I strongly encourage you to visit the poster number 1.3 so that Greg can show you a series of um, blog posts he's generated which describe not only the different approaches he's taking to, to uh, machine learning, deep learning, and statistical analysis of our data, but um, I think he even has a few PyJupyter software um, examples where you can test the models and play with different inputs. So another major project that we're taking on is to present all of this, all of our efforts, all of our data, uh, distribute all of our cells, et cetera, to the rest of the world. And we are building a website called the Allen Cell Explorer, which will be the major scientific um, portal to, to that type of information. Again, this will be released in the spring, and if you go to allencell.org today, you'll see just two pages a very empty home page and another page that I'll cover in a minute. Some of the efforts that we're undertaking are um, to clear, clarify and explain what we're doing and why we're doing it here. Um, professional scientific illustrator Tao Do is responsible for generating these types of images and increasingly we will be converting these to more interactive displays that, that allow 
different audiences to go deeper to get an understanding of the science being done. As you saw mentioned earlier, there's um, on our databases tab, we'll have portals to more direct collections of information as well as to our cell line catalog. So this has been developed in collaboration with uh, visiting scientists Megan and Tanya in our gene editing group. And this is available and live right now. This is a screen capture from just this morning. You can select the cells, you can filter the cells, you can go to the Coriol site and order the cells. And back on our site, um, by the end of the year, we'll have extensive information about the, the quality control steps and example data for each component. I'm sorry, for each cell line type, including Z stack series, so you can judge for yourself the quality of the, of the work. A really cool thing that we'll be able to demonstrate for you live at, at, the, at the booth, uh, it's not a booth, it's our poster upstairs. We just came back from ASCB, so I'm, I'm used to speaking in that manner, is uh, a web browser accessible volumetric viewer for our data. On the left, you can see a screen capture that, that Dan grabbed this morning. He's the developer of this package where he did some filtering operations that can filter on the metadata associated with, it, with each cell. And it loads directly in the browser without having to download any software or even install a plugin. You can visualize 3D model of the cell as a Z stack that you can scroll up and down. You can turn components on and off and you can view it as a volumetric image. You have all of the basic features that you would expect of a volumetric viewer and some new ones that Dan is building in. Um, right now, he's demonstrating the ability to see the cell and the context of the surrounding cells uh, so you can mask off the cell itself and then change the opacity of the adjacent cells so you can see why it might be in the shape it's in. And something we're really excited about because I've never seen this demonstrated for any other volumetric viewers that it works uh, on a mobile device, the exact same software directly in the Chrome browser or in the Safari browser on this iPhone here can be loaded and manipulated to, um, again, scroll through the segmentation data or through each of the channels of, of the volumetric image set. And of course, it is a 3D cell that you can spin around with your finger. You can zoom in on with all of the standard techniques you would use for um, uh, for a touchscreen device. So we have that uh, demonstrating upstairs as well. And I'll just, I'll, I'll conclude here by saying that uh, a lot of what I've shown you is, is just patchwork um, products that we will be smoothly assembling into our final website product by, by the time we release this spring. And What's really cool about that is you've seen this, this image before a few times, and it's uh, this little dotted gray line around the outside is, is hard to notice, but it's an important critical part, which is this entire system is going to fit together where the, all of the data from the wet lab through the automated microscopy pipeline to the modeling will, will be available and integrated in a smooth, increasingly smooth and seamless system with the efforts of the software engineering team building up the back end. So with that, we thank you. And I guess, can I release or do you want to? <coughs> Melissa will finish up with a couple comments. Uh, we have a couple of minutes for questions. If anybody wants to ask Graham anything, uh, we'll also be around outside, so you can feel free to grab anyone from his team afterwards. Sorry, is there a charge for the cell lines? How does that work when we want to obtain cell lines? What the? Um, maybe you're not the person to ask. Sorry, I had to, I, <laughs> I had to come late. I think Nikki will will answer this. Cell lines are available through Coriel, 
and they are $600 a vial, which is a lot less than any of the other cell lines that are currently available in Coriel. They have a lot more QC behind them too. Any other questions? One more. So that uh, cell visualization, the 3D, was really amazing. I was wondering if uh, the structure for that is going to be available so that we can take our own data sets and be able to visualize them using that same sort of framework? We, we, we certainly aim to open it up. And what I'd be more interested in, I think what you're asking really is, can, can we make it accessible so that it's easy for people to do that, i.e., just with an upload button? So the core software that that's based on is an open source package, um, and it does have an option for, uh, for creating an account, and we just have to figure out if that's something that we're going to be capable of managing ourselves. Um, otherwise, the software itself will be available for others to use. Yeah. Great. Uh, yes, so, oh, my slides aren't up anymore, but um, <laughs> that, that package and another one we're developing that I really wanted to give you a teaser on, but I decided it'd be better to wait because it'll be more impactful when it's a little bit further developed, uh, is developed in a game engine which lends itself to VR, and a couple of our other collaborators are keenly interested in VR, as are we, so yes. <laughs> 